Good morning, uh, and welcome to the meeting of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. I'm Council Member Francisco Moya, the chairperson of the subcommittee. If I could just ask my colleagues to, uh, just for uh, a few seconds, then, then we can get uh, back to our conversations. Thank you. Uh, today we are joined by Council Members uh, Ayala, Reynoso, Rivera, Borelli, Levin, uh, Barry G. Of course, uh, uh, Council Member Lander is here as well. Uh, today we will vote on several land use applications. We will vote to approve with modifications the Gowanus Neighborhood Plan LU number uh, numbers uh, 869 through 874. These applications uh, affect uh, property in Council Member Landers and Council Member Levin's district in Brooklyn. Our modification to the zoning text amendment will adjust the permitted use of manufacturing and MX districts uh, refi uh, refine the definition of Gowanus mixed use, expand the uh, and strengthen the Gowanus mixed incentives, establish lower height limits uh, south of Thomas Green Park to reduce shadows on the park, uh, adjust the authorization for large mixed use sites, and strike MIH option two, leaving MIH option one and the deep affordability option to ensure the deepest affordability. Together, these actions will transform uh, an area of Brooklyn currently zoned for limited industrial and commercial development into a dynamic mixed use, mixed income neighborhood. Uh, with approximately 8,494 new housing units, including nearly 3,000 affordable units, 1.5 acres of new parkland, four acres of new waterfront open space, and significant uh, projected commercial and community facility space. The uh, council members, uh, Lander and Levin, have uh, negotiated a comprehensive package of additional capital and policy commitments from the administration, including an unprecedented city investment in NYCHA, which I will let them describe in detail. Uh, we will also approve LU's number, uh, numbers 884 through 887, the Gowanus uh, CSO facility applications, and LU 888, the Mercy Home uh, UDAAP amendment. These applications include map changes affecting Douglas uh, Street and, the, and uh, Fifth Street, a site selection action and a site selection and acquisition action to facilitate the Gowanus Canal CSO facilities uh, on the east side of uh, the canal between uh, DeGraw and Butler Streets in Council Member Levin's district and at 2nd Avenue and 5th Street in Council Member Lander's district. Uh, the UDAAP uh, amendment action will facilitate the development of approximately 45 units of affordable housing uh, at the Mercy Home site at, eight, uh, at 485 uh, and 847 4th uh, Avenue. Uh, at this moment, I'm going to turn it over uh, for some remarks uh, to Council Member Lander and then to Council Member uh, Levin. Oh, sorry. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Chair Moya, and it's good to be here uh, with Chair Salamanca as well. Uh, I'm just thrilled, along with Councilmember Levin and with so many members of our community, the Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice, Community Board 6, and a whole array of public housing tenants, uh, homeowners, environmentalists, artists, small business people, to be able to announce that we have reached agreement with City Hall and the Gowanus Neighborhood rezoning, uh, and that with the points of agreement negotiated here, believe that we have a powerful plan for inclusive and sustainable growth in Gowanus for decades, even generations to come. It is really because of deep community engagement by so many hundreds of people uh, that we have a plan that makes an unprecedented investment in the NYCHA developments nearby and includes the most stringent affordability, sustainability, and mixed use and creative neighborhood uh, requirements of really, I believe, any previous neighborhood rezoning. Um, I won't go through it all because there's 21 pages of uh, points of agreement, but a, a quick summary. I mean, first, the Gowanus Neighborhood Rezoning is the first mandatory inclusionary housing neighborhood rezoning in a whiter, wealthier neighborhood. So it will not push out low-income residents. It will bring in low-income residents and people of color into a neighborhood where they cannot afford to live today. 3,000 of the 8,500 units that will be created under this rezoning are affordable to low and moderate income families. The city-owned land is 100% affordable. The public place site, 950 units of 100% affordable housing, half of it affordable to families at or below 50% of area median income with a new park, a new school, beautiful design on that site. 
the MIH units are um, option one, so six, you know, 25% um, out of affordable, uh, affordable out or below 60% of AMI with 10% out or below 40, with the deep affordability option also mapped on site. So 3,000 affordable units in between Park Slope and Carroll Gardens. We did a racial impact study of the type that will be required in the future by the legislation we passed in this council, which provides strong evidence that we are creating a more diverse and inclusive neighborhood. Innovative zoning tools for schools, for transit, to preserve the mix of uses in the neighborhood, 150 affordable artist studios, and then thanks to the organizing uh, and hard pushing by Councilmember Levin and myself, um, we were able to secure $200 million for comprehensive in-unit renovations of every single one of the 1,662 NYCHA units in Gowanus Houses and Wyckoff Gardens, the first time that has happened in a rezoning, powerful organizing by residents. Big commitments on stormwater infrastructure, on flooding, on community facilities for the Pacific Library and the Old Stone House. Councilmember Levin will talk more about the investments in NYCHA. Um, some really powerful investments there that he has secured. So I will stop there, but I will point people to both the press release that we put out and the points of agreement. And then I do just have to say a set of thank yous because this has been so much work by so many people. And you know how this real estate and development and land use stuff is. It can be really bruising. And it was not that there weren't hard conversations. There were a lot of hard conversations but people just kept going and were really willing to lean in together. So to the folks in the room who made that happen and many more, I just wanna say a lot of thank yous. Steve, I do wanna start with you, like to have a partner in the council to be able to do this with. Like I don't take that for granted. This was hard work and we had each other's backs and we stuck together uh, and that is kind of amazing. Uh, and our staffs were incredible, uh, Ben Solitaire and for me especially, Julia Ehrman. Uh, who's just been amazing on this, Julia. Thank you, like really, really incredible. And props to Catherine Zanell who did that uh, before Julia got there. Um, city planning folks aren't in the room, but for the record, boy, uh, Jonathan Keller, who led this team at Brooklyn City Planning, uh, did hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of meetings. Winston Van Engel, Jonah Rogoff, Sagi Golan, all the DCP staff who did this amazing indoor-outdoor public hearing that was required by the courts for the Community Board 6 at the Old Stone House, incredible. The council land use team was amazing on this. Raju, Julie, and when she was here, Rosa Kelly, and in her role at HPD as well like uh, impossible without you. And then especially Brian Paul, who just stuck with this community through like thick and thin and really did an extraordinary job uh, pushing and organizing. Uh, the city hall team, uh, you know, who we barely, none of us have slept, but um, uh, really productive in uh, back and forth with Sean Fitzpatrick, with Anne-Marie Gray, uh, thank you both, and Jody Callender, who I don't see, but who was also really fantastic in working on, especially the NYCHA pieces. Uh, Greg Russ came out last week, so to Greg, Steve Lovechi, Shalisa Reed, and Brian Honan from NYCHA. So many agency staff, but Mike Deloach from DEP, folks from HPD, Parks, SCA, DOT. Community Board 6's recommendation on this is uh, really what set the table for Steve and I, so thank you Mike Rassiopo and Alex Sharonbeck. And then finally, uh, hundreds of people through the Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice, a really remarkable coalition who were serious about their demands but open to the possibility that if those demands would, were met, that this would be worth doing and worth leaning into and, and getting to yes. So uh, Michelle, Sabine, Karen, Monica, Paula, Val, Ed, Teresa, SJ, Andrea, Diana, Amy, Johnny, David, Lynn, and lots more leaders with the Gowanus Neighborhood Coalition for Justice. Um, this win is really yours and it is what sets up the future uh, for Gowanus to be a more inclusive, sustainable, thriving, and diverse neighborhood. I'm really proud of it, and I hope you guys will join uh, in supporting it and vote yes today. Thank you so much, Chair, for the time. Th thank you so much. Uh, now I want to turn it over to Councilmember Levin for remarks. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. I uh, just want to um, acknowledge the work that, uh, that Councilmember Lander put into um, getting to this day. Um, the first meeting that, uh, that Brad organized about this issue um, was in uh, the summer of 2013. Um, Mike Bloomberg was still mayor. Um, that's how much work went into this. It was um, hundreds of meetings, hundred, 
easily 150, 200 meetings, community meetings. Um, you know, the, every aspect of this was um, was was really thought through in a um, in a really conscientious way, and I think that this provides a really good template um, for uh, any future administration, any future council, any future council members of how you can do community-based planning, um, how you can do um, uh, responsive planning um, to community needs and have that drive the agenda um, and, not, and not have the agenda driven by you know, other interests or, or um, uh, uh, players from outside of the community. Um, this is truly a community-driven um, zoning, and the priorities of um, investments in uh, sustainability, uh, no new CSOs into the Gowanus Canal, um, uh, you know, a, a, um, a resiliency and sustainability are uh, top priority. Um, the investments in, in, in NYCHA, in public housing. I represent <coughs> the two developments, um, and uh, they have, um, you know, their infrastructure is, has been crumbling because of lack of investment. Um, and uh, I really appreciate the administration, um, uh, City Hall, uh, and uh, Greg Russ, who came out a couple weeks ago to take a look at it um, and really saw firsthand um, what tenants are living through um, with holes in their walls and. Um, sewage coming up through their kitchen sink, um, you know, conditions that we wouldn't deem acceptable if the landlord was anybody else but New York City. Um, and, um, and, and the response uh, from, from NYCHA and from the administration is that they're going to fully modernize every unit in these two developments at a cost of roughly $200 million. That's a, that is a historic level of investment. Um, in addition, um, the administration is committed to expanding the Mayor's Action Plan, the MAP program, um, to these two developments. It's the first expansion in, uh, in eight years or seven years, um, and, uh, um, and these are the first two new developments since the program started um, in 2014, and, and, uh, and this will bring uh, ongoing um, real resources um, to, to these two developments in terms of uh, human infrastructure, youth services, senior services, um, uh, domestic violence services, um, and really um, uh, providing those wraparound services that are so necessary um, for communities that are, um, that can be marginalized or disinvested in um, over generations. And so this is starting that work of turning that around. Um, and so I just want to um, acknowledge GNCJ, all of those, uh, all of the, the people that have volunteered their time to do this. I mean, this has been an immense amount of work on everybody's part. And um, again, Councilmember Lander, who has really um, led, um, and, um, and this is a, a great accomplishment. Um, your staff, um, uh, uh, Catherine and Julia, and, um, uh, uh, ben from my staff as well. Um, I also want to acknowledge um, the the folks from from the mayor's office who are who are here um, and city planning for for being so collaborative um, and uh, and and negotiating in good faith. And so uh, thank them. And I'll turn it back over to you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Yeah. I'm sorry. A lot of work with us, and I shouted out Jody Callender before, but she wasn't in the room, so I just want to say thank you to both of them as well. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we will also vote to approve with uh, modifications the 343 Madison Avenue MTA uh, HQ special permit applications under LU numbers uh, 867 and 868. These actions relate to property in Council Member Powers' district in Manhattan. Uh, the Council's modifications uh, modification will be to lower the uh, building's podium height. Uh, we will also vote to approve with modifications LU uh, numbers 864, 865, and 866 related to the New York Blood Center. 
Uh, this proposal seeks zoning map amendment and zoning text amendments and a special permit pursuant uh, to the proposed zoning text. These actions uh, affecting property in uh, the districts of council members uh, Kalos and Powers will facilitate the development of a proposed new 16-story, 334-foot uh, tall life science research and development building at 310 East 67th Street in Manhattan. The council's modification uh, to the special uh, permit would lower the building's height to 218 feet uh, at the top of the street wall uh, of the building with any mechanical space limited to a maximum of 233 feet. Uh, that is a reduction of over 100 feet from uh, where we started, uh, combined with investments in St. Catharines Park and Julia Richmond Educational Complex. Uh, that makes this a great outcome for New York City. It's our responsibility after what we have been through as a city to do everything to upgrade our public health uh, infrastructure. This project will create space for new research labs, which, will, uh, which we hope will help cure diseases like sickle cell and is a, an important step forward in improving our public uh, health infrastructure. With the changes we're making today, I think we have uh, responsibly balanced the concerns of this community uh, with the broader citywide need and, frankly, national need for improving our life science, uh, sciences sector. Uh, we will also, uh, we will also uh, uh, produce high-quality construction jobs and building service jobs, which is always a win for communities across New York City. A compromise is never easy, and uh, this project proved the maxim. A, a good comp as they say, a good compromise is when everyone is unhappy. But compromise is what's required to uh, solve problems. And I want to thank the Blood Center for all that they do uh, for this city. Dr. Hilliard, thank you. And I want to thank Council Members Powers, Kalos, Borough President Brewer, Senator Kruger, Congress Member Maloney, uh, for all your passion and advocacy on behalf of your community. Uh, and with that, uh, all items are coupled, and I now call for a vote to approve LU's uh, 884, 885, 886, 887, and 888, and to approve with the modifications uh, I have described LU's 867, 868, 864, 865, and 866, and 869 through 874. Uh, Council, can you please call the roll? Chair Moya. I vote aye. Council Member Levin. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you. Um, so again, I want to congratulate um, uh, Brad on, on the Gowanus vote. Um, I also want to acknowledge that, um, the, the, the work that uh, Councilmember Kalos put into um, negotiations, and I, I realize that um, uh, we might not be um, at, a, at a place that uh, is exactly where uh, he was hoping to end up, but I think that his um, uh, his advocacy in, on behalf of his community and his district um, is commendable, and um, and here he, here he is. Uh, I just wanted to acknowledge, um, you know, his his uh, hard work and dedication. And um, with that, I vote aye. Councilmember Reynoso. Uh, permission to explain my vote. Thank you. I also want to commend uh, Councilmember Kalos on the work that he did for his community on this project, the funding that he got for the school and for the park, and also the reduction, the significant reduction of height on the center. Um, his fingerprints all over that. Um, while we might have come to a place where he's comfortable with, I feel that he uh, worked admirably and very hard to get us to where we are today. Um, his community should be very proud. I also want to thank Councilmember Brand Lander for this long, long um, time that we to get to Gowanus rezoning. Um, you talked about the victories, but the $200 million to NYCHA is the largest commitment ever made by the city um, for NYCHA development. And we're talking about improving the lives of people that need uh, better homes, more dignity in the work that they're doing. So I want to thank you for the great work you did there alongside Council Member Levin, um, and I would like to vote aye on all. Fredenchik. Please come back to me. Is that a pass? Yeah. Council Member Ayala. Yeah, 
Permission to explain my role? Permission granted. So I also want to congratulate Councilman Melander and acknowledge um, all of the hard work on uh, behalf of Councilmember Kalos. And you know, I, I just really wanted to add that I think that this is one of those projects that has the ability to do a better good for the entire city. And I think that it, I look at it from, from that perspective and uh, really excited about the possibility of obviously bringing new jobs, but helping to advance uh, medicine in this way. The blood center supplies 80% of the blood to health and hospitals uh, in districts like mine. Uh, they've advanced uh, science medicine in, in, in several fields that primarily impact people of color. Uh, so to me, it was a really uh, important step um, but I wanted to acknowledge all of the hard work on behalf of Council Member Kalos. Um, I know that he worked hard on this, and so um, with that, I vote aye. Council Member Rivera. I'm going to align myself with the colleagues, with my colleagues' comments, and commend all of the council members for their work. I vote aye. Council Member Borelli. Aye. Councilmember Gradenchik? Aye and all, and uh, no on land use numbers 8, 6, 4, 5, and 6. The land use items are approved and referred to the full, approved in accordance with the description, and we are referring them to the full land use committee. Uh, thank you, and that concludes today's meeting. I would like to thank the members of the public, my colleagues, uh, council, land use staff, and the sergeant at arms for attending. This meeting is hereby adjourned. <laughs>